Hey guys, today I'm upgrading the front speakers on my Toyota Corolla. The factory speakers don't sound very good, and the tiny magnet means they don't have much punch, so I'm replacing them with these Infinity speakers that are known for their powerful, vibrant sound. Here are all the materials I'll be using, I'll have links to all of them down in the video description. I got 6.5 inch Infinity reference speakers, speaker ceiling tape and Metra adapter brackets, 14 gauge speaker wire, heat shrink, terminals, butt connectors and tape, and Stinger fast rings and MVX baffles. I'll start by removing the door panel. To see how to remove it in detail, check out the video linked up in the cards. Now disconnect the speaker connector by pushing on the release tab and pull it out. The speakers are riveted on. To remove them, start by drilling into the rivet with a quarter inch drill bit, moving the drill side to side until the top of the rivet comes off. And drill again until the plastic end comes off. Now the speaker should come off easily. To remove the remaining part of the rivet, use a pair of pliers to hold it from behind. This will prevent it from spinning. And drill the end with a 5 30 seconds drill bit, just enough so the end can be squished. Now pull the plastic part off, squish the end, and pull it out from behind. Make sure to remove the rivets out of the door if they fall inside, to prevent rattling later. Next I'll install the middle part of the Stinger Fast Rings kit. This foam improves sound quality by reducing vibrations and minimizing wave interference. To install it, Start by cleaning the area behind the speaker with grease remover and make sure to clean it well. Don't try to remove the asphalt tape that's already there. The ring should stick onto it just fine. Now remove the middle ring. Peel off the paper on the back. And stick it on, making sure that it aligns perfectly behind the speaker. I'll install the speaker bracket next. The Metra bracket kit comes with two brackets and a pouch of screws, washers, and nuts. The included screws are much longer than needed, and the washers are pretty flimsy, so I'm going to use shorter half-inch screws with locking nuts instead. The bracket has a few extra mounting tabs for other cars. They are designed to snap off easily, so I'm just going to snap them off. To reduce the transfer of vibrations between the speaker and door, I'll put on a layer of foam tape on both sides of the bracket. The speakers came with a little tape, but it's not enough to tape the back of the bracket also, so I got a big roll of better quality tape, which will be enough to install all four speakers. So let's install the bracket, make sure to use a washer on each side, and line up the hole for the wire facing up. Since I'm using lock nuts, I'll hold them from behind and then tighten with a socket. Use a wrench for final tightening and make sure not to over tighten. Now clean the metal behind the bracket to prepare it for the next foam ring. This is the widest ring in the fast rings kit. I'm going to cut off about half inch from the non-sticky end then it can fit in without interfering with the window. Make sure to cut the correct side and leave the longer part with the sticky end. So I cut it down to one and a half inch and the distance between the window when it's rolled down and the door frame is one and three quarters so it'll fit in nicely. Let's put it on, peel off the backing paper and carefully put it through the hole making sure not to touch the adhesive until it's lined up. Touching the adhesive will cause it to stick right away, and once it's glued, it's impossible to reposition. It will just rip apart, so make sure to get it right the first time. Here it is installed. Next, I'll get the speaker ready. I'll connect 14 gauge wire to the two terminals on the back of the speaker. The wider terminal is positive and the narrow terminal is negative. To identify the positive speaker wire, look for a white stripe. Mine is marked with white writing. Strip a quarter inch from the end of each wire. 
Put the white terminal on the end of the positive wire. Make sure it's all the way in. And the narrow terminal goes on the other wire. And now crimp them down. I recommend using a crimper instead of pliers to get the best connection. It has a preset gap, which means that it won't squish the joint too far, which could weaken it. Now push the terminals on the speaker. They may fit on very tightly, so make sure to support the backing plate to avoid breaking it. Wiggle side to side if they don't go on easily. Pushing too hard could bend the connectors or the terminals on the speaker. Now cut the wire, making sure to leave enough. About a foot long is good. My positive wire doesn't have a white stripe all the way to the end, so I'm just gonna strip it here, and then I'll know once it's installed that this is the positive wire. The speaker screws will go into these posts on the back of the bracket, so I'm gonna mark the holes in the foam just to make lining up easier. For the best sound quality and vibration reduction, I'll install NVX baffles, which will direct sound into the foam behind the speaker so it can be absorbed, and the silicone acts as a cushion between the speaker and brackets to reduce vibrations. To install the speaker, put it in the NVX baffle first, line up one hole and put a screw through it, pull the wire through the hole at the top of the bracket, and screw it in. The screws that come with the speakers fit perfectly in the Metra brackets. So I got the speaker installed, now I'll connect the wires. Start by cutting the factory speaker connector off, and strip about a quarter inch off the ends. The wires should look clean. If they look white and corroded, cut the wire a little higher to get the good part of the wire. To make the connection, put the heat shrink on first, Make sure not to forget the heat shrink goes first. Put the connector on and push the wire all the way in. And crimp it down. This is the wire that I stripped so I know it's positive. I'll connect it up to the positive wire on the car, which is pink white. Both the left and right positive wires are pink white. This car uses aluminum wiring which can't be soldered. That's why I'm using these connectors. Here are two types of butt connectors. I recommend using the one with the see-through insulation because it's made of thicker metal and it holds much better. Even if I try really hard, I can't pull this one off, but the other one comes off very easily. Once the connections are made, slide the heat shrink over the connectors and shrink them, making sure to heat up both sides. Since aluminum wire corrodes from moisture, it's important to make these connections as airtight as possible. That's why I use the heat shrink. And I'll wrap each wire with electrical tape for further protection, and then wrap both of them together. The MVX baffle sticks out too far for the door panel to fit back on, so I'll cut it along the fold here, and then it will fit on perfectly. Before reinstalling the door panel, make sure that the speaker is working properly. The stock speakers were very flat and muffled, so I'm very happy with the upgrade. I can already tell the sound is much clearer now, and a pleasure to listen to. If you're interested in the speakers, I'll have links to them down in the video description, along with a few other speaker options. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. It helps me create more videos, and consider subscribing, I'll be posting more car, home and other repair videos in the future. Thanks for watching!